I didn't realize. But but no, uh, you know it's bad when when your wife, uh, the one that writes the bills and and sends them all out, and she says, "Tracy, you're working too much. I'm not seeing you very often." And then the the as the boys come in today, they were like, uh, are, "Do you have to work today?" I was like, "No, actually, I'm I'm my own illustration today." So so that's why we have the have the shirt on uh, uh, this morning. Uh, before the ones that don't know. Uh, I actually work for a local heat and air company in the area. I'm not advertising them, but 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 what I do have uh, owned. Uh, uh, well, let me explain it. Uh, I, I fix things for a living. First of all, that, that's that's what I do. Uh, I don't install. I don't do now. If, if it's slow enough, I will. Uh, but I fix things. And then when all else fails, of course, if you can't fix it, Randall knows exactly what to do. You hit it as hard as you can, or kick it, or take that hammer and and just kind of cling it on the side and see. What happens? I I have uh, uh, I have to get in some tight places too. Uh, some of the places that I get into, they're they're just dark, <laughs> to, to say the least. And to be honest with you, I've even been under some really nasty places, some nasty houses, to the point that that one year I got I got double pneumonia. Uh, a viral thing happened uh, from something I breathed in. Uh, uh, but I've I've been in houses that that you literally have to walk through a path in the house because uh, ha- have you ever seen uh, Buried Alive uh, that show? Uh, I've been in those that are, are are that there's just so much stuff that you have to follow a path through. I've been in uh, houses where you have to take your shoes off before you even get to the to the front door. Some of those are for cleanliness. Some of them are for religious re- reasons. Um, I've been in basements that are full of water. I've been in those tight crawl spaces. I've been in such a tight crawl space uh, that you literally have to get in between the floor joists to crawl. And, and Seth is shaking his head. Yeah, I've been in that one too. Uh, that, that's some of the places that I've been in. Uh, I've been in attics. Uh, attics in the middle of summer uh, with it on. Uh, I've worked in rain, uh, snow, mud, around snakes. I've seen plenty of snakes. Sorry, Angie. I said the word. Uh, and I've been around spiders, uh, spider webs. There's even a time that I was crawling under a house and, and it was it was, it was was a kind of weird house because you actually crawled kind of uphill before you got to the back side but I was crawling up and I had my head down typically head down bill your hat down that way as you're going through the spider webs your hat gathers all the spider webs and not you and so I get up there and I lift my head up and right there in my face I'm staring at it a skeleton uh, of a dead animal of some kind but a skeleton teeth out you know uh, that that took me back for a moment but but that's uh that's some of the stuff that I've I've come to uh I've actually uh, done this job for a while I actually had the boss man come up to me a couple weeks ago and he said happy anniversary you've been here 18 years uh 18 years of of doing this and to be honest with you I thought I had seen it all I thought I've crawled through it all I thought I've I've I've, I've done it all in the heating and air industry uh until Friday this past Friday. Uh, uh, so, so I pull up to the house. And that, now I'm talking this house is out in the country. So, so that starts the story there. So I, I pull up. And the driveway is actually a driveway for several houses. It's one of those driveways that are shared. And there's like three or four mailboxes. And so I pull up. And of course nothing is numbered. There, there, there's no numbers anywhere. And so I come up to the first house where it splits off. And, and I was like, well, do I turn here or do I go up this shady-looking driveway and see where it leads? Which usually isn't a good thing to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there where the road forks, and I'm in the country. No service. I have everything. We have no paper anymore. Everything's on the computer. Everything's on my phone. Uh, my, my, my dispatch, my, my address. Uh, the map. I, we use Google Map through our uh, service type now we use. None of it worked. None of it. Now, I did have a little bit of a phone signal, so I tried calling the customer to say, okay, which house do I need to be at? He didn't answer the phone, of course. So I'm sitting here in the driveway. What, now, I've been sitting here a few minutes, and, and so, okay, so what do I do? So all of a sudden, a guy comes out of the house. I was like, perfect. He finally saw me. He's going to wave me down and, and, and say this is the house. So I, I made that judgment call. And so I, I took that drive, and I'm going up there. And that good call I thought I made turned out it was, it was not a good call. 
uh, because as I got closer to the guy, I realized that he was pointing a shotgun at me. Uh, and, 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 and he, he's sitting there and he's saying, uh, why are you sitting in my drive for so long? And I wanted to say, my van, triad, heating and cooling, it's a moving billboard. How do you not realize? And, and at this whole time, he has the gun pointed at me. And I finally, I kid you not, at this moment, my phone starts to work. And my phone says, you're at the wrong house. Thanks, uh, but, but I start telling him, you know, th- I need this address, this person, and that's when he finally lowers the gun. I was like, geez, I, I, it says try it heating and cooling, not local burglar, uh, 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 but, 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 you know, I thought I saw it all, and then all of a sudden, that happens. I've never had a gun pointed at me in, in all my years of doing, to be honest with you, in all my years of anything. I've never had a, probably had some people that wanted to at some point, but never actually did it. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm sitting there saying, I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. Uh, but, 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 but on a serious side, you know what? I do actually love my job. It's, it's provided for my family. Uh, it's given me opportunities to meet people that I never dreamed of that I would have been able to meet. I've met pastors. I've met uh, missionaries. I've met uh, so many people. I've, I've had the chance to do things uh, that I never dreamed because, because, because of my workplace. They allow me to go on mission trips. They allow me to take off. They allow me to, to live my life in ministry and everything else. They, they, they've really been good to me over the years. Uh, uh, but most importantly, like I said, they've given me a chance to minister in ways that I never imagined. They've given me that opportunity. Uh, I, I've actually led a Bible study uh, through work. It's been several years back. I, and you know, and I've been in those houses with those customers where when you walk in, they know you're coming and you all, you automatically, you start having a worship service right there with them. I've been in those houses. I've, I've been able to share the gospel so many times uh, with, with customers. I, I've sat at the dinner table uh, with a young man uh, younger than I and, and we had a heart to heart about family. Uh, you know, that's one of the, 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 great, the great moments in, through my work that I've had. I've even talked to a guy. He had a beer in one hand and a Bible in the other hand. You know, I've been able to sit down and have a conversation, a real conversation with him. You know, I've laughed with so many customers over the years, and I've had the opportunity to cry with them as well. Uh, it happened, again, just this past week. Uh, a customer had us come out, check, check something out, and she just lost her husband. Uh, you know, so uh, I, was, I was able to sit there and, and, and love on her for a bit and minister to her. Um, uh, that's just some of, the, it, some of the things that I've been able to do. I, I, I've had those customers, and this is the fun part too, I've had those customers that, you know what, they just want to talk. I, I, and more than that, they just want to vent, and they find out that this, this youth pastor, he'll let me vent. Uh, but they'll vent about all kinds of things. They'll, they'll vent about life in general, about family, about church. My, my, my favorite, and I, and, I, and I think I've told it before, but uh, I had one gentleman, local guy. I knew the church he, was, he went to. And, and he sat there and he was telling me, you know, I just love, I love my pastor. Uh, he is a great guy. He, 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 his preaching is phenomenal. He knows the Bible in and out. Uh, but he he just he, he doesn't wear a suit and I just can't get past that. I was like, really? And then he said, But but you now our associate pastor. Now he dresses the part. You never see him without a suit on. Even during the week when you see him out and about, he'll have a shirt and tie on. I mean he is always well dressed. I kid you not, this is worth. But the old boy can't preach a lick. <laughs> I was like, really? And then he, then he, then he went to my favorite part. He, he said, but that youth pastor, he, he's a good guy and all, but, but you know, he's just always around those youth. <laughs> well, that's what he's supposed to be doing. So, but, but he just wanted a vent. That's what he wanted to do. Uh, and that gave me opportunity to minister to him and, and, and talk about some of those things. But he just wanted to vent. And, and we actually had an old office manager, Sharon. Uh, she was there for years. And she, off, she told me all the time, if she has a problem customer, something other's not right, they're mad, they're furious, and we have to go out there, I always send you, Tracy, because you are a smooth talker. I was like, really? 
Really? And, and, I, and I finally told her, you know, it's, it's not that I'm a smooth talker. It's just they understand and they get it that, that I actually care and that I'll listen to them. I'll listen to the complaints and we'll see what we can do from there. I, I guess you could say out of everything that I just told you and all this that, that I've told you, you wouldn't think that it's heat and air by all the opportunities and everything I've had, but it is. Uh, but I guess you could say I use this uniform. That's, this is why I'm wearing it today. You, I, I take this uniform and I minister with it. That, that's the cool thing about it. Simple things, right? Uh, such a simple thing, a uniform. Or, or, or even my tool bag that, that you, if, if you ever see me on the job, you'll see me. Uh, actually, I got a, a backpack now that, that you put, and, and, and that's, that's, that's my ministry. That's my simple tools that I use to minister. And, and the reason I can say that is because I let God, I let God use that kind of stuff so that he can reach the world around me. So that I have the opportunity. I use this shirt that I have. It gives me opportunity is what I'm trying to say. That this shirt that, that I have on gets me into doors. And I'm not just talking about the physical door that you walk into. Of course I get in that door. If they want the air conditioner fixed, guess what? They're going to let me in. What a great deal for a, for, for a youth pastor or anybody in ministry. They let you in. Yeah, because you want something fixed. But they, they let me in. And, and, and here's the thing. I don't... I don't I don't misuse this. I don't beat them over the head uh, with a religion. But instead, like I was trying to tell Sharon, I let my relationship with Christ shine through those areas. Because that's what it's about. Uh, letting God shine through those open doors that, that he gives us. Let God use those simple things. Did, did you catch that? Dad? I take something simple. A shirt. A job. A tool. And let God use them to reach out to people. Just let the simple things. The simple things. If you don't get anything else, get that. Uh, get that today. Let God use not only you, but those things that are in your life. Today's message is going to be one of the most simplistic messages that I will ever give. Why? Because I'm not going to ask you to do anything different. God's not going to ask you to do anything different. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep doing your job. Keep, keep walking where you're walking. And then start letting God infiltrate that. Let God shine through those areas. Let God shine uh, through those things, those simple things. That's what we're going to learn today. Is, is God can take that, that something simple. He can take that ordinary thing. And make it extraordinary. Taking that simple thing and make it extraordinary. We're going to actually do this in two parts. We're going to attack it in two different ways. The first part, we're going to take hold. Take hold of that usual thing. That simple thing. That simplistic thing. That ordinary thing. And not let us turn it into something extraordinary. But let God make it something Extraordinary. Take a hold of that. And then after we take hold of it, the second part that we're going to do is use it. If you're going to grab it, use it. If you're, going, if you're going to do that, don't stop there. We're going to actually be pulling from Exodus. We're going to go all the way back to the Old Testament. Second book, uh, Exodus. Chapter 4 is where we're going to be. We're going to look at two different areas. First thing in chapter 4 we're going to look at in verse 1 and 2. And then in, in a few minutes we're going to look at uh, verses 10 through 12. Um, but these are very familiar verses. Uh, and and if, if the verses aren't familiar, the person is familiar. Uh, it's Moses. It's the Old Testament figure, Moses. We've, we've all heard Moses. We've heard the stories. Uh, even uh, Moses is one, one of those characters that's within the Bible, one of those central figures in the Bible that even if you are not a Christian, you know who Moses is. So, 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 so as we do that, as we set up the story today, as we set up the text today, we find Moses, uh, the, the, where he is in his life, he's not too sure about himself. He's not sure about, about what God is telling him, and he finds himself unstable at best. At best, he is just unstable where we find him uh, today. And, and we find out that, that really it's, it's all in his head. Uh, because, because of his past. He was raised by wealth. He found out uh, 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 about his heritage, his slave heritage. Uh, he even killed a man. And then he ran away. 
when, when things got difficult, when things got tough, when, when he knew he saw the end coming, he ran. And all this built up in his head and everything that happened and, and all this stuff. And it keeps building up and snowballing and getting bigger and bigger. And, and, and to this point that we're at today where he finds himself, he's not sure about himself. He's not sure about his worth. Because he thinks his worth is nothing. See, that's, that, that right there is the problem. Our worth. Because we can, we can put the simple things in our hands and, and, and the job, the shirt, the tools. We can have all the simple things. But, but, if, but if we think that we have no worth, guess what? Those things have the same problem. It's worth. We, we don't, we, when we're to that point, we don't see those simple, ordinary things as something God can use. Because after all, if I'm worthless, then everything I touch is worthless. Everything I try to do is worthless. We need to get past that. God can't use me and he can't use the things in my life. We need to get that thought process out of our heads. Move on. Uh, get past that. Is that an easy thing to do? No, absolutely not. I understand that. That's why it's one step at a time. Uh, and because I, at one point of your life, I'm sure that, 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 that somewhere on this list, I'm not good enough. I can't figure it out. You know what? I, I'm just too tired. It's impossible. Nobody, nobody cares. I, you know, those, those things in my past, I just can't forgive those things. My worth, I, I, I'm just worthless. I'm not, I'm not smart enough. I'm not able. I can't go on. I, I can't do it. I can't imagine. And I'm afraid. I feel alone. You know, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just stupid. I, I, can't, I can't do this. At one time in our lives, I know that, that, that probably one of these items had your name on it. And this, and this list, this list that, that list that I just gave you, that's just what we think about ourselves. That that doesn't include what other people have said or other people think about us. That's a whole different sermon all on its own. About what other people think. This is just what's coming through your head. I, I said today... I told you today was going to be a, one of the most simplistic messages, and it is. But what I did tell you, what I failed to say, the biggest issue with this is us. It is. We'll, we'll get in the way more than anything. Us, our minds, our worth, or what we think our worth is. We have to learn to look past our insecurities. That's, 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 before we go any further, that's what you have to tackle. You have to look past your insecurities. Are you going to have your insecurities? Yes. Are you going to have your problems? Yes. We're going to find that out in a minute that, that Moses had some problems. He did. And God kept saying, okay, so we got to move past these insecurities. And he's going to give us an opportunity to do that. He's going to give us something to do that, and we see that in our first verse, a uh, couple, couple verses today in Exodus chapter 4, if you're there, uh, verses 1 and 2. So what can we do to get past those insecurities? I find it awesome, God's plan here. I want you to hear this. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is part of his plan. And, it's, and it starts with Moses and his issues. Moses answered, what if they don't believe me? What if, what if, what, what, what will I do if they do not believe me? If they don't listen to me and they say, the Lord, God, he didn't appear to you. What, what if they don't listen to me? God, I hate to keep bringing this up, but what if they just don't listen to me? I could sit there and see Moses just trying his best to argue back and forth with God. What if they don't listen? What if they don't listen? And God finally says, Wait a minute, stop. The Lord said to him, in verse 2, the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? Simple. Simple, right? And listen to his answer. A staff. Simple item. A usual item for Moses. He, he, he herds. He, he's, he has a shepherd's stick. He, that, that's a staff. That, uh, a staff that he uses to, to, to lead the animals, to, to, to fight off unwanted animals. It's just a stick. It's a staff. It's something usual, something simple, something ordinary that everybody would be carrying. That's around Moses. Something so simple. We find Moses at this point standing in front of a burning bush. Now, first of all, we'd probably run 
if this happened to us, a burning bush that is talking to us, and he's trying his very best to argue with God on why he should not do what God wants him to do. He's like that kid that, that keeps arguing, I don't want to. <laughs> why are you making me do this? I don't want that. They're not going to listen to me. I don't want to do this. And, 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 have you been there though? I mean, yeah, I gave I gave uh, illustration of a kid, but as adults, don't we do the same thing? Don't we say, Yee. now we'll word it differently to make it sound better. I'm not sure if that fits my agenda. That makes it sound a whole lot better, right? It's no different. I don't want to do it. They're not going to listen to me. Uh, that, that's, that's his argument. Uh, have you ever been there? Ha, ha, may, and it, maybe it's not the burning bush like I said. If we, uh, I, I promise you if a burning bush is in front of you and God is talking through it, you're go I'm going to run. Now, I ain't going to talk for you. I'm running. I'm going to take off running. But, but have, have, have you not had that uh, happen to you, whether it be a new job? Maybe an opportunity that God has put in front of you. That once in a lifetime moment that God has put in front of you. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that it's God. And he's wanting you to move forward. He's wanting you to meet new people. He, he wants you to lend an ear to somebody. And, 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 and maybe even he wants you to share a word with somebody. So what do we do? What if they don't believe me or they don't listen to me? Now, we, we pick on Moses here, but is that not what we do as well? We have that Moses complex all the time. We do. I do. Uh, so, so what does God do? He, he asks a simple question. What is that in your hand? And Moses, a staff. A simple, ordinary staff. A simple staff that is in his hand but extraordinary with God. There's nothing about Moses that makes the staff extraordinary. Make sure you hear this. There's nothing, uh, because it, it applies when we start applying it to our own lives. It's not the thing, it's not me that makes the items extraordinary. I don't make this shirt extraordinary. <laughs> Believe me. It's what God can do. It's God that makes it extraordinary. This staff, later on we find out, even within the, the, the chapter 4 here, it turns into a snake and then back to a staff. This staff, actually later on, it, 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 when he touches a rock with it, water flows out of the rock. Even further down the road, he lifts this staff, this simple staff, this ordinary staff, this usual-like staff. He lifts it in front of the Red Sea and... It parts. It wasn't Moses that did those things. It was God. God made it extraordinary. God wanted to use Moses. But Moses wasn't sure. So here's the plan. God's plan. This, this, is, how, this is how God worked it out. He asked Moses, 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 what is in your hand? A staff. God took something that's familiar with Moses. He gave Moses a security blanket. It's what, I'm, it's what he's comfortable with. The staff that he's holding, he's comfortable with it. Use the staff. I'm going to use, it. I'm going to use you, but we're going to use the staff because, because you're, you're having issues, Moses. Uh, you're, you're having insecurity issues. Uh, so I, I'm going to give you a safety blanket. You hold on to the staff, and I'm going to do some extraordinary things in your life. A simple thing, an ordinary thing that's comfortable in his hands. And he uses it to get his message out. God does the same thing for us. He takes the shirt, this ordinary shirt. And like I said, I, I don't make the shirt extraordinary. My tools that I carry around with me that I fix things with, the five-pound hammer that I also fix things with, it ain't me that makes it extraordinary. It's God. He could take those things so that I can have the opportunity to talk to people. So that I have the opportunity to minister to people. He can take those simple things that are in our lives. And if we just go. 
Key word there. Don't, don't, don't overlook that word. That two-letter word. Go. If we just take those simple things that he will make extraordinary. And if we just go. He'll move in them. Through them. Through you. The word go. That word. That's, that's kind of an important word when it comes to our relationship with Christ. Uh, over um, uh, in, in Matthew 28, Great Commission, right? In, in verses 19 and 20, therefore go, right? Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them, there's another word, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. God's there. God's moving through those circumstances. God is moving through those simple things in your life. I'm, surely I'm always with you. Always to the very end of the age. Go into the world. I'm not saying go over to Africa. Now, Bill, if you want to know about Africa, talk to Bill. He's been. Sometimes he sends us to places like that. But the world that I'm talking about is the world that you're living in right now. Small atmosphere of people that live, uh, that you talk to on a daily basis. Go into that world. With those simple things. Right? Easy. We could probably end right now. And we can get a really early start to lunch. Uh, but there's a problem. What I talked about earlier. We get in the way. We're human. Moses shows us that problem in, down, if you jump down to verse 10, chapter 4. Moses said to the Lord, here's his argument again. You can see Moses here again. Pardon your servant, Lord. Wait a minute, God. I can, I can just see him saying this. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Here it is. He, 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 he keeps putting himself in the way. Uh, Moses had some low self-esteem issues here. He, uh, Moses is saying, who am I? Who am I? Surely they won't listen to me. Remember, this is the argument that he had at the beginning of the chapter. They're not going to listen to me. And this is after God has already, take your staff, throw it on the ground, snake. Turns back into a staff. Stick your hand into your cloak. He's, he's done miraculous things right there. Right, right now, God has done some remarkable things. Some awesome things. Some things that only God can do. And Moses still goes back and says, Wait a minute. Pardon your servant here, God. But, but, but you know what? I can't talk. I'm not a good talker. Now... Uh, not eloquent, not, uh, which if you, if you go back where, where he's talking about this to some of the originals, it actually, he's, he's talking, you know, I'm heavy-tongued. So, so I'm not taking anything away from him. He had a, 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 a real speech impediment here. Imagine, imagine you carrying around a couple of 50-pound barbells and just walking around. Sooner or later, you're going to feel heavy-footed. Now imagine that with your mouth. That, that's, that's what Moses says uh, that his issue. That's why he's not eloquent. That's why he's not good with, with speech and tongue. So therefore, you know what, God? They're not going to listen to me. I'm not taking anything away from Moses. I get that. It's a legitimate issue here. Life can be difficult. I get that without a shadow of a doubt. We all know that, that, that life can be difficult. The problem here is, though, it freezes him. It, it's, it's to the point that, 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 that he doesn't want to do it. So... It just freezes him. I can't do it. I'm no good. I'm damaged goods is what he's saying. This is where the rub starts. Because you keep telling God, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm damaged goods. I can't do it. I'm no good. I'm damaged goods. And you keep saying that. You keep thinking that. And, and, and all of a sudden, you're putting limits on yourself. So if you're putting limits on yourself, you've got to take that to the logical conclusion. If you're putting limits on yourself, you're also putting limits on God. See, that's, that's where the rub starts. Uh, you start putting limits on God, a, a God that is limitless. 
a God that has no boundaries. Uh, and we try to fix, we try to put that into a fixed box. You can't do it. You're not going to do it. He's not going to allow it. Uh, but but, but ha, 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 have you been there? Whether you admit it or not, uh, I, I bet you have. And, and, and somebody might be dealing with it today. Somebody might be going through it today. Because you know what? It's a default state of mind for most of us. When things get difficult, when things get hard, when it's time consuming, when it's aggravating, we move into that state of mind, that woe state of mind where I can't do it and we turn instead of that simple thing that God can use and, and use in an extraordinary way, we take I can't do it, I'm not good enough, I'm damaged goods and we use that as our safety blanket. And most of the time we're okay with that comfortable here at least at least I know that I'm no good at least I know I can't do it at least I know I'm damaged goods I can hold on to that and, and wrap it around I, I'm worthless I'm worthless that's a nice cozy place uh, for me to be in and and to make it okay it's not never has been we're not geared that way we're not made to be that in verses 11 and 12, the Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Is it not I, God, that has done this? Now go. Man, that word again. Really? Really, God? Now go, and I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. The God that created the heavens and the earth. Think about this. This, this, is, this still to this day amazes me when I say this phrase. The God that, got, that created the heavens and the earth also created you. The person that's sitting in that pew right now. The person that is standing up here in a work shirt. God created us. God created us. The mouths that we talk with were put in motion by Him. By God. The reason you talk today is because of Him. Your eyes, they're filled by Him. Your mind was wired to search Him. Do you realize that? If you're a non-Christian this morning, if you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I can, I can guarantee one thing about you. You were wired to search something. That something is God. That's the way he wired us. To always search. Why do you think there's so many different religions in the world? We think we need to be searching for something. Just some of us are searching for the wrong thing. He's wired us that way. God speaks to Moses and tells him that, 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 it's, that, that it was me. It, it's it's the, the God that has created you. And I, God of all, can do anything through you. I can do anything through the items that you have. The stuff that you have. The simple items that you have. I can do anything through those things. Verse 12. Verse 12. Though. We, 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 need, we need to park here just a minute. If you would, it says, now go. There's that word again that God keeps putting in front of us. He keeps telling us to go. And so, now go. Listen to what God tells Moses here because he's telling us the same thing. If we'll just stop, if we'll stop and listen long enough and be silent for him to hear, for, for, for us to hear him, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. Now, we need to stop there just for a moment because sometimes people make the mistake of thinking that God is going to, going to tell you every time what he wants you to say, that, that he puts those words right into your mouth. And so we automatically, if that's our, if, if that's our logic, that God is going to put the words into our mouths every time, then, then when the words don't seem right, it's a mistake, and so therefore the worthless stuff starts again. But, but that's not what he's saying here. He, he's not saying that he was, he's going to put his words into your mouth every time. What he does say here, I will help you speak, I will teach you. Now, do I believe that God can't intervene and put 
words into your mouth that you don't even know where that came from, absolutely, positively, without doubt, it's happened to me. I didn't, I didn't walk into a circumstance. I didn't know what I was going to say or anything. I had, I had no experience, prior experience. I, I didn't know where I, I didn't know point A to point B. And God put the words in my mouth. So, so can God, can, can, can he intervene and put the words in your mouth? Absolutely, positively, literally, without a shadow of a doubt. But more often, he wants us to open up the Bible, to listen to him, to learn from him, and then that word go. He'll teach you. He'll teach you. He'll help you with what you need, but, but it's going to take some work on your side. That, that's why uh, here, here lately as we've started the youth back up, uh, we're, we're going through an exercise uh, for next little bit on, on how we actually open our Bibles up and look at our Bibles and read our Bibles. That, that is just, you know, we just don't open it up to, uh, to do memory verses or to learn. And that's important. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Memory verses are great. But when I open the Bible up, I want to make sure that they, when they open a, the, the, the Word of God up and they're reading uh, through a chapter, that they can answer some questions. And, and so, so what I'm teaching the youth, uh, down in youth on Sunday nights is, is when we open our Bibles up, we need to go ahead and start asking some questions. Who, what, where, when, and how? Simple questions. Who's in the story? What's, what's important in the story? Uh, who, what, where? Where is it taken? What's the setting? What's going on? When? Because that's important sometimes to know the time frame. But, but that last word, the how. The how, when we, when we open up the Word and, 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 and read in His Word, how is that important or how do I apply it to my life? Do we read the Bible like that? I don't all the time. Sometimes I'm reading just to get through the reading. And I need to stop. I need to, I need to sit back and, 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 and hear what God is telling Moses here. I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But it takes work on our part. That's why we had to park there just for a moment. I apologize for that. But I think that's so important that, 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 that we just don't. We need to make sure that, that we are in God's word. Reading, understanding, listening. Slow down long enough to listen. That, that's key on there. That, that way when we have the simple things in our life. When, we're, when we have the shirt on. When we have the tool bag. When, when your staff that you're carrying. And God puts you in a circumstance. God puts you in front of somebody. You can have a discussion with them. That's what it, I apologize for that, but we had to stop there. But as we finish, as we finish up today, I some, some questions for you this morning. Are you using what God has given you? Are you using the simple things? The usual things? The ordinary things, your staff. Do you realize God has given every one of us something? It's your job, your tools, you know what, even your hobbies. I said the simple things. I'm not asking you to do anything out of the ordinary. Keep walking your life. Keep playing in the ball games. Keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Do the simple things, but let God shine through those things. Your skills, or using your skills, you know what, and even your kitchen skills. Use those simple things, those ordinary things, those usual things. And now I'm not even talking about spiritual gifts. That that's a whole other sermon in itself. Uh, but, it, but, but, but since I'm not going to do announcements, I'll go ahead and say it now because I've, I've made a commitment to say it every week. If you haven't been to the website yet, I'd love for you to go to the website because there's a survey on there about spiritual gifts. And we would love to know uh, where God wants you plugged in at. 